Danafrips has developed its own streamer network bridge that works with Room, HQ Player, AirPlay and DNLA. It has an FPGA filled with proprietary digital signal processing and uses galvanic isolation to output a clean digital signal. The Denflips Arce has a remarkable name. If you pronounce the name the English way, there might be some misunderstanding. It's supposed to be pronounced the Spanish way, where it stands for maple. It is Denflips first streamer. As often is the case, they use a streamer module so it can be used in more than one model while still maintaining the software across all models by working on that module only. But where many manufacturers buy in from streaming specialists, Denafrips has developed the streaming module by themselves. But let's first see where the RCA is to be used. Being a streamer, it needs to be connected to the network over a network cable. It does not do Wi-Fi. Music can be sent from the computer to the RC over the network using programs like Rune, HQ Player and UPnP, AV or DLA supporting software like Orivana, Amara, J River Media Center, Minim Server, Windows Media Player and others. It also does Apple AirPlay. Using such programs, internet radio and streaming services like Spotify, Amazon Music, Tidal, Cobus and others can be played too. One of the outputs on the RC needs to be connected to a digital to analog converter aka DAC. In this diagram I used I2S, but AES EBU, SPDIF and TOSLINK are available too. If your DAC has a clock signal feed, the RC can be synchronized to the clock of the DAC by connecting two BNC cables and make a change in the setup. The DAC is connected to the amplifier over either RCA or XLR cables. The amp in turn connects to a pair of loudspeakers or headphones. The music software on the computer is mostly controlled from a tablet or smartphone. The RC is available in black and silver anodized aluminium. The very sturdy chassis measures 215 by 230 by 45 mm and weighs 3.5 kilos all identical to the Denafrips Iris 12-1 DAC that I reviewed two weeks ago. It stands on four high cone-shaped feet that end in rubber tips. On the front there is a standby button, a set of four LEDs that indicate the chosen input. Below it four LEDs that indicate whether the setup is engaged, the network is detected or if local playback is engaged. The I2S USB function is not yet implemented. Setup is activated with this key and uses double functions of other keys as often is the case with Denafrips products. The manual gives clear instructions and distributor Vinshine Audio has published very good instruction videos on YouTube. The I2S USB key is not used. The source key lets you select between four inputs and the local key is for playing local files. Since it needs an Android phone or tablet and I am an iOS user, I have not tested this. The IC mains inlet has gold plated UP OCC copper contacts. Fuses can be found internally. Two USB A connectors are used for software updates and to connect a USB storage medium with music to. Next to it the RJ45 network connector and a slot for a micro SD card with music. Then the two clock inputs, one for 44.1 kHz based music files and one for 48 kHz based files. Then we come to the digital outputs, starting with AES EBU, then SPDIF, TOSLINK and I2S on HDMI. The latter needs some explanation. Please do realize that the I2S output is not an HDMI output as used for video. 
Here the HDMI cable is misused for a special format of digital audio where the clock signal, called serial clock, the word select that indicates whether the music data is for the left or the right channel and the serial data that contains the music information is sent over three pairs of cables. Since the HDMI cable has four pairs, has more than sufficient bandwidth capacity and is available around the world, manufacturers started using it for I2S. Before that three or four BNC cables and CAT5 network cables were used. The problem is that neither the use of HDMI or CAT5 is standardized. So what signal travels over what pairs of cores can vary. The most used pinout is the one that PS Audio uses, but other pinouts can be set in the setup menu on the ARS. Again, the instructions in the manual and in the Vinshine YouTube video are clear. Links in the description. The chassis is easily opened by removing four torque screws along the top of the back panel. When opened we see a small circuit board holding the IC mains inlet, two fuses and mounted on the back of the board the voltage selector. This can be accessed from a hole in the bottom of the RC. Although distributor Vinshine will send you a device set to the correct voltage in your country, it doesn't hurt to check prior to first use. From this board the AC goes to the 60VA O-core transformer that uses ultra pure OCC copper. After the transformer the now lower AC voltage goes to a hefty power circuit that converts AC to DC and buffers it in those electrolytic capacitors. The streaming module is on a separate board and is Denafrips own design. I expect this board to be found in other Denafrips products in the future to add streaming functionality. The digital signal from the streaming board then is passed on to the processor part of the mains board. Here we find a 480 MHz ARM M7 processor, an Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA and an Altera Max 2 non-volatile memory. In the signal part optocouplers are used for galvanic separation. Two temperature compensated clock crystals, OEM to Danafrips, are used for 44.1 kHz based and 48 kHz based sampling frequencies. As said the ARSIS supports four streaming protocols, Rune Endpoint, HQ Player Network Audio Adapter, NNA for short, Apple Airplay and DLA. Rune is behind with certifying equipment, according to some even half a year. The RC is also waiting for certification, which means that you do can play music from Rune, but that the settings of the capacity of the RC are not done automatically. HQ Player is software that runs on a computer and does upsampling and then can send the audio to a network audio adapter. It can lead to great sound improvements, but it has a steep learning curve. Airplay is Apple streaming format that can handle 44.1 and 48 kHz sampling frequency only and sometimes uses lossy compression according to a video by John Darko. Deanlay is also restricted to 48 kHz maximum sampling frequency. In use the RC is simplicity itself. Connected to power, the network and a DAC, then press the standby button, wait till the net LED lights up, select the correct input on the RC and the DAC and Bob's your uncle. Setting up the I2S input for a different pinout than the PS Audio scheme is slightly more difficult but as said Denafrips worldwide distributor Vinshine has made excellent instruction videos on YouTube. And he also gives good support over email. The same goes for setting up the RC for external clocking. Playing music from a USB drive or USB stick must already be possible too. But since I don't have an Android tablet or phone, I couldn't test this. Since it's most likely the ARSA will be used together with the Denafrips Ares 12-1 DAC, which I reviewed earlier, 
I tested it using this DAC connected over a 50 cm UHD 4 kHz HDMI cable. According to Finchine you should not use an HDMI cable longer than 1 meter. The DAC was connected to my reference setup 2 where the Marantz PM KI Pearl Lite drives the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers connected over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. The network switch is the Upton Audio Ether Regen with Upton Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. From there a fiber connection connects it to the third floor where the Intel NUC i7 FNH runs Rune server on an M.2 SSD with music files on an 8TB SSD internally. The equipment is housed in a target rack. The reference streamer in this setup is the Magna Mano MK3 with Farad power supply running Rupi XL. As a source I mainly use Rune. I don't use HQ player and both AirPlay and HDMI limit me since they only support base sampling frequencies. The RC sound neutral, clean, open and musical. In this setup I could not hear any difference between the RC and the Mano, which is about the same price. Not much more to say. Sounding equal to my reference, which was selected as the best in this price range over the past years. Although using the RC in set 1A is totally misplaced, I considered it to be interesting to see how it would perform here, like looking through a magnifying glass. Here it was connected to the mains over a transparent power isolator 8 and to the Zissel GS1900-10HP network switch over a network acoustics Muon Pro system network filter. On the other side it was connected to the Core Dave DAC over a network acoustics Muon AES-EBU cable. The DAVE was also connected to the transparent isolator and to the Air Acoustics AX520 amp. That drives the PMC FAC12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio AUVA 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. Comparing the RC to the Grim Audio Mu1 digital player would have been complete nonsense. So the comparison was against the Magna Mano MK3 Farad again. The equipment was housed in a Creative Thren Tree rack. Here small differences could be heard. The RC sounds a tad brighter, the Magna a tad warmer. Again very small differences and both sounded impressive on the Dave. Nowhere near the Grim of course, but for this money very impressive. The RC is very well built and smart looking. It is a work in progress. Elvin of Finchine expects support of streaming services among other features and Rune certification. But as a Rune endpoint it works very fine. Airplay in DNA also works good, but by nature are limited in sampling frequency. Compared to the Magna Mano MK3 Farad running Rupi XL the differences in sound quality are very limited. Since the Magna is Raspberry Pi based, it can run other programs like Volumio, Pi Music Box, Rune Audio and so on. But that needs fiddling and the I2S interface pinout can't be changed. The RSA can change the pinout and can be clocked externally. It is around 70 euros higher priced which on a price including 21% VAT of 1549 euros isn't purchasing decisive. And on that note we come to the end of this video. See you next week, Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media, it is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support the channel financially, especially in these times. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, 
Thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.